So in this constant acceleration question, we're doing some SUVAT. We're plotting speed time graphs for two objects. The final part is a bit trickier. It involves more problem solving. So we have two flies, P and Q, are crawling vertically up a wall. At time t is equal to zero, the flies are at the same height above the ground, with P crawling at a steady speed of four centimeters per second. Q starts from rest at time t is zero. It accelerates uniformly to a speed of six centimeters per second in six seconds. Fly Q then maintains the speed. And we're trying to find out for part A, the time when the two flies are moving at the same speed. So let's draw an image to represent the scenario. So here we have flies P and Q. P is going up at a steady speed of four centimeters per second. And then Q starts with zero speed, it starts at rest. Eventually, it works its way up to a speed of six meters per second, six centimeters per second rather. And that takes a time of six seconds. So we want to find out the time when the two flies are moving at the same speed. So P is always traveling at the same speed, at four centimeters per second. So for part A, we're basically trying to work out when does Q reach a final speed of four centimeters per second? So for Q, let's write out what SUVAC quantities we have in this table. We have the initial speed is zero. The final speed is four. That's when we're trying to work out the time. And we don't have anything else. We don't have the displacement. We don't have the acceleration. We're trying to work out what time is. So we're gonna have to work out one of these two things in order to work out time. So we can use the fact that Q goes from zero to six centimeters per second in six seconds to work out what the acceleration is. We can then use that acceleration in this SUVAT table. So let's write out a second SUVAT table for Q. Initial speed is zero, final speed is six. Acceleration we're trying to work out and this takes six seconds. The equation that relates those four things is V is equal to U plus AT. Rearrange for A. A is V minus U over T. This is then six minus zero over six, which is one meter per second squared. Okay, so that's our acceleration, one. And now from these quantities, we can then work out what T is. So using v is equal to u plus at again, t is then v minus u over a, which is four minus zero over one. So it takes four seconds for the two flies to be moving at the same speed. Okay, part B. Sketch on the same diagram speed time graphs to illustrate the motion of the two flies. Right, so, Let's draw out a velocity time graph. So let's start with P. So P is moving at a constant speed of four centimeters per second. So that's all we have here, this is four. The units for V I'm saying are centimeters per second. Time is in seconds. And then for Q, we know that Q will go from zero to six centimeters per second in six seconds. We're also told it's a uniform acceleration, hence why we could have used SUVA in the first place. So putting that in blue goes from zero to six meters or centimeters per second in six seconds, and then it will hold that speed for the rest of the journey. We also worked out that this time over here where the two flies meet is after four seconds. Okay, for part C, given that the distance of the two flies from the top of the wall at time t is equal to zero is x centimeters, and that q reaches the top of the wall first, show that x is greater than 36. So basically, show that the height of the wall has to be at least 36 centimeters tall. We're told that q reaches the top of the wall first, so that means that it must have overtaken fly p. Fly P, which remember is shown by the purple line here, starts at a speed of four, where Q, the blue line, starts at a speed of zero. So 
P is therefore going to be ahead of Q to begin with. Eventually, Q then gets to a speed of 6 meters per second, and then it will start when it increases in speed past the speed of P's. In this stage here is when Q will then start to catch up to P. Once Q has caught up to P, then the wall can end. The wall has to be long enough for Q to catch up to P. So the distance at which Q catches up to P, that's the smallest height the wall can have. That will be the minimum value of x. So to work that out, we consider that the area under a speed time graph is displacement. So if I draw a line down from here, let's call this time t. Let's say that at time t, fly q has caught up to fly p. If that's the case, the area underneath those two graphs, the blue graph and the purple graph, will be equal. So we can set the areas equal, work out what t is. Once we have t, we can then sub it back into one of the area equations to work out the distance. All right, so let's start with the purple area. The purple area, so we know that this is a constant speed of four meters per second. Area of that would just be four times t. And then for the trapezium, we can split that up into a triangle plus a rectangle. The first part, the triangle, that would be half base times height, so half six times six. And then we have the rectangle as well on top of that. So the rectangle has a height of six and it has a base of t minus six. So this will be six times t minus six. Okay, expand everything out. 4t is equal to, so this is 36 times a half, so 18. 18 plus 6t minus 36. Rearrange, we get 2t is equal to, so 18 minus 36 is minus 18. Bring that over, it's 18. t is then 9 seconds. So when t is equal to 9 seconds, the areas underneath those two graphs are equal. That means that fly Q has caught up to P. The wall has to be at least that height for Q to reach the top of the wall before P does. Put this T is equal to 9 back into probably this equation here. That's the easiest one. 4 times T is going to be this distance here. If we do 4 times T, 4 times 9, that gives us 36. Again, that's the distance at which Q catches up to P. So the height of our wall must be bigger than this if Q reaches the top of the wall first.